It's Real Talk. Real Talk, Episode 7. Let's go. Hello, everyone. My name is Simon. I like keyboards. You probably like keyboards, too. Welcome to my keyboard liking channel. Uh, this is Episode 7 of Real Talk, where we're going to talk about big keyboards, notably full-size big keyboards. I do love me a big keyboard. So uh, I've got a very, very advanced script, uh, which I'm going to go through. So uh, yeah, let's roll the intro and get into it. I've been in this hobby a while. You guys have been in this hobby a while, I presume. And if you haven't been in the hobby a while, hi. Welcome to the hobby. <laughs> get out while you can. Uh, all right, here's the deal. I like big keyboards. A lot of people like big keyboards. As a matter of fact, most people like big keyboards. But the hobby is kind of different. So let's start with, you know, everybody using big keyboards. So the full size is the de facto keyboard layout. You walk into an office, you walk into anywhere with desktops, they're using full-size keyboards, you know? We're not going to talk about Apple uh, because they've been pushing 65%. And, you know, if you put your charging port on the bottom of your peripheral, you have, you're have you not allowed to have an opinion. So Apple aside. But basically, every single PC keyboard for the past 20-plus years, full-size. People are used to full-size. Full-size is comfortable for people to work with, you know? In terms of main layer functionality you've got everything you need on your main layer now i'm not layer shaming here but not everybody is you know at that level not everybody can go in and learn how to do layers some people have you know mobility issues you know hands issues and stuff and a full-size keyboard is a lot more you know accommodating compared to other keyboards that we see which begs the question, you know, if the full size keyboard is the de facto keyboard, why is full size and large boards such a small subset of the community? And there's quite a few reasons why. Now, I remember when I started, you know, peeping around the hobby in like 2016 ish. And back then, you know, 60% were noob bait and not in a bad way. It was a cheap layout and you could get a 60% for a lot cheaper than you can get a custom full size or a custom TKL, you know? So people were looking at, hey, do I spend $500 on this big keyboard or, you know, do I minimize my risk and spend like $300 on the smaller keyboard? And I get that, that's fine. But the hobby has come a long way. Prices have come a long way. Manufacturers have come a long way. Now, let's, Let's talk about the, the, all the pros of having a big keyboard. We talked about not having to deal with layers and not having to deal with layers is a massive thing when it comes to, let's say like office work. And the majority of people in this hobby, right, are doing office work. You sit at a desk, you type on a keyboard, right? Now I've got my big keyboard here and it's not a full size. Okay. I do have a full size but I've been enjoying this. And there are advantages to having so much on your main layer. I can do control, shift, up arrow, backspace in one fluid movement without needing to go into layers. So if you had, for example, layered arrows, well, that gets a little bit more complicated. Now you're holding down like five keys instead of three. And God forbid you've got like delete off, you know, not on a main layer then you're pressing way more. Anyway, ease of use is fantastic. The second thing is key sets. Now, I know that key sets have toyed with the idea of, you know, doing TKL base kits and doing smaller than TKL base kits, but a base kit, at least by my definition, and we can do a whole video about why this is, should be able to cover a full size. It's a base kit, 
That should be a base. It, the base should be the de facto keyboard. Anyway, the nice thing about having a full-size keyboard or a large keyboard is that key set that you went out and you spent $100 on or $200 on, or God forbid you bought Darling at the Peak and spent $1,000 on a key set, if you're using a 60% or a 65%, you, you're not even getting your value out of your key set because half of it is in a bag. And to be fair, pretty much all of my key sets are on boards. And yet my keycap drawer probably weighs like 20 kilos because of just all the extra numpads, all the extra things that, you know, if I had a full size, they'd be on the board. If you're into resin, I pray for your soul. But on a full size, you can do wild stuff. You got this whole area over here. You can go freaking wild. And if you're dealing with something larger than a full size, let's say you're doing an XT or a battleship, think of how many artisans you can show. Think of how wild you could actually make your build, which is something that's really cool. Is it not? At least I think it is. I think if we're spending so much money on key sets, we should at least get our money's worth, you know? I mean, Alternatively, you could build a TKL and then build a numpad, also fine. And then you get to display your whole key set, especially if you've got something special, you know? Every one of us has that key set that just brings them joy, that just is irreplaceable. It's not GMK Greg for me. I think it's burgundy for me. And obviously beige because boomers. But yeah. In Imagine actually getting your full value out of the key set. That'd be fucking great, right? Point number three, that is great for full-size boards and large boards. Large boards sound good. Oh, Simon, that's, that's subjective. No, 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 no. Larger boards are going to sound better because you have more space to work with. A bog standard, just square, like literally a block of aluminum, Top and bottom and a plate in the middle is going to sound better the larger the board is. That's just how it works. And that's the nice thing about full size and large boards. You don't have to go in and add weights and add foam and do meme sound tuning and do plate cuts and PCB cuts. And you don't have to do any of that because the full size is already freaking perfect. If you are a designer, if you are a keyboard designer, and you've exclusively designed small boards, fine, whatever, but you're allowed to do that. Build some big boards. I understand that the market is not there, that you know there isn't a huge amount of interest by the community for these full-size boards. But if we're looking at this long-term and talking about the longevity and the sustainability of this hobby. And when I say sustainability, I'm not talking about, you know, the community. I'm talking about the, the sustainability of the products that you make. You know, a 65% given to a, you know, a random person who's not into keyboards is not going to be a useful tool. A full size, anybody can use a full size. Your grandma can use a full size. Your uncle can use a full size. Everybody can use a full size. And that's amazing. It means that if you have a board and that board is, let's say, not the best or cheap, or you just hate it and you want to get rid of it, you're not limited to only selling it to people within the hobby. You can actually just give it to a normal person. And that's great. And that normal person, if sometime in the future, they're like, oh, you know, it'd be nice if I could change some keycaps. They can, because it's a full size. Everything's going to fit. Asterisk. So that's if you're a designer, please try, try and make a full size. If you think like, oh, you know, 65 is just the proportions. This is just the, the design aesthetic. Oh, I'm all about that. But a full size or larger gives you so much more room for activities. You can design the bitchinest full size. Like, if you are a good designer and you look at a full size and you're like, I don't know what to do, there's something deeply wrong inside your brain because you can make the most amazing full size. 
think of think of the design elements that you could incorporate into something so large. Think of what you can do with all that space, what you can do with the bottom, what you can do with the sides, what you, what you can do with bezels. There's just so much more room to work with. You could start working with, you know, multi-part, crazy materials, stuff like that. And it would be great. But I hear you designers say, I can hear you, oh, nobody's going to buy it. Well, two parts. If you're a customer, you're a keyboard enjoyer, and you don't own a big board, why? The, the, the primary reason that I see from a lot of people is, one, it's expensive, and we'll talk about that. And two, it takes up space. We'll talk about that. So we'll start with it's expensive. Boards have gotten cheaper. Not all boards have gotten cheaper, but the race to the bottom has pretty much happened. And when I say the bottom, I don't mean the bottom in terms of quality. I mean the bottom in terms of price. You can pick up a nice full size for two, three hundred bucks, which is, you know, to somebody that's not super deep into keyboards, expensive. But for somebody that's super deep into keyboards, that's a bargain. Let's let's remember that the the Apple thin ass full size keyboard is $200 for like this much aluminum in it. So pretty good deal. In terms of space, we'll talk about space. Let's talk about space. Okay. Let us let us talk about space. Okay. 1800 exists. First of all, oh, but Simon 1800 is too big. I like a TKL here. Let me let me show you. Let me show you. This is a TKL. That is literally an inch. That is literally an inch. If you are struggling because you are missing an inch of space on your desk, you have bigger problems than the size of your keyboard. Okay. So 1800 by default is, is within spitting distance of a TKL. Alternatively, there exists such a thing called Southpaw an extreme Southpaw. Now, what Southpaw does is instead of the numpad being over here, it puts it over here. So you have more space for your mouse. And then you've got like super extreme Southpaw, like uh, the, the kangaroo, which you'll see on this YouTube channel soon, in which even the nav cluster is moved to the left. That means essentially you have a 60% in terms of mouse space, but you have the functionality of a full size. You have the acoustic benefits of a full size. You have the your keyset looking pretty of a full size. You have all the advantages. And even if you were to hand that board to somebody that's never seen a, like a custom keyboard, they're going to look at it and be like, ah, I understand the stuff that's here is now here and I can use it. It's not a problem. All right, let's get rid of this. Oh. Also, counterpoint, this is a 65%, okay? This is a freaking 65%. It's literally the same size. It's literally the, I, obviously this is a very big and bezely 65%, but people bought this. People like this. This is literally the same size as an 1800 and people aren't buying 1800s. Why? What is wrong with you? Ah, <sighs> listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that everybody should go out and just like immediately buy a full size right now. But I'm saying as um, what I'm trying to say is, you know, as a keyboard enthusiast, as a keyboard enjoyer, you should, you should look at some big boards. You should look at some big boards. And I know that there's a lot of cons space saving Southpaw done. That's not a problem. Price prices are coming down. Okay. Prices are coming down. They're still a wee bit expensive, but the nice thing about a nice full size is it doesn't need exotic materials or weights to sound good. It's going to sound amazing with just two pieces of aluminum, top and bottom. Slap it together. Sounds great. Other thing is expensive shipping. And yeah, fair enough. Expensive shipping makes a lot of sense. But uh, look again at the kangaroo, which you, I'm just going to link it below, even though there's going to be a review of it coming soon. But it's 450 bucks in stock with free shipping. 
So like remove 100 bucks for shipping, it's 350 bucks for a good full size that's in stock. That's if you like South Pot. And if you don't like South Pot, there are plenty of full size boards coming. Okay. Uh, listen, this has been just a one way rant about, you know, why I like full size. But I want to see why people don't like full size. That that's my real question. Like, like I get it. Like, you know, I'll TKL because I don't need an numpad all the time. But sometimes I do, and that's fine, whatever. But at least I own a couple full sizes, you know? Or large boards. Okay. I have how many boards with numpads? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Five boards with numpads. And I have like, let's say 30 boards total. I'm not asking for a huge ratio, you know, but I'm saying that you guys should be open to the beauty of a large full size board. The beauty of having, do you remember when you had dedicated media keys, like on a freaking Corsair? You can do that on a custom board with a 108 layout. You, you can literally have it. You can literally have your cake and eat it too. Oh, but knobs, wait for one with a knob, you know? Anyway, my name is Simon, and I like to compensate for things by buying very large boards. Uh, thank you to all the patrons. Patreon helps this channel a lot since it's a small channel and you know the YouTube revenue is like $15 a month which doesn't even pay for like the electricity of my computer running so thank you guys I do appreciate it uh, if you have a good argument as to why nobody should ever own a full-size board drop it in the comments if you have an argument as to why you'll never own a full-size board Drop it in the comments. See you guys.